Okay, so I really think you two will really like this house. Come on in. So as you can tell, everything comes with a purchase price. The furniture, the pots and pans, all of it. Everything. Yes, everything. So the previous owners had to relocate overseas for work and they had no time to auction anything off and it was too expensive to ship. What about our stuff? Well, there's a three car garage out back. You can just move everything in there and then figure it out later. Problem solved. Perfect. Okay, so what we have here are original hardwood floors, updates throughout this view. I mean, you move in, you're pretty much upper class by the end of the week. And then of course, there is that folklore that comes along with the estate. Folklore? The ghost. I beg your pardon? Well, that's the story. The Royals have Evelyn, the Wendells down the street have Perry. This whole block's accounted for. You cannot be serious. Well, serious or not, houses in this area only stay on the market a few hours. Apparently, a house being haunted is a huge selling feature. Who knew? Haunted by who? Well, the story goes that once you move in, you're visited by a spirit, your ghost. And then once you see it, it remains in the house forever. I mean, it's all the neighbors talk about. I get a dozen calls a week from couples hoping to find an open property out here. So who's the ghost? Well, that's the kicker, no one knows. If there's a ghost, then that's a big if. How does no one know? Everyone knows about Evelyn and Perry. How has this ghost kept its identity a secret? I have no idea, but it has. I don't make the rules. Anyway, take all the time you need. I'll be outside once you've made your decision. So what do you think? It's big. I know, I like it. Ghost, huh? Ghost or no ghost, this place is beautiful. Mary! Oh. Hi, Patrice. This garden is going to look so nice. Thank you. Just trying to get everything in shape out here for spring. The previous owners weren't much for green thumbs. How's Ned? Oh, you know, always working. My William, too. Any luck on finding your ghost? Not yet. Shame. Ours brings so much joy to our lives. Patrice, how long was it before you saw it? Pretty soon after we moved in. Maybe the next night. Well, now don't stress about it. I'm sure it'll show up any minute now. <laughs> No! Oh my God! I am. I am so sorry. Oh, I should have watched. It's where fine. I put these stupid feet. It's fine, really. Um, it's... Really, it's it's not a big deal. 
Good luck. dinner. Great. I'm starving. Florentine was terrific. It's my mother's recipe. Something wrong? Patrice Miller came by while I was in the garden today. I keep telling you we need to get a gate out front. It's not that. Then what? She asked me again if we had seen our ghost yet. Mary. It's been a month. Part of the reason I agreed to buy this place was because I... I wanted something no one else had. And you have that. Look around. How many other couples our age can say they live like we do, in a place like this? I know, I'm grateful, I am. It's just that, why are we the only home on the street with this problem? Problem. <laughs> it's a problem. We have a problem. You know, Mary, maybe you're getting a little too carried away with the ghost nonsense. Nonsense? Yeah. You know, you're already in the house all day long as it is. You know why I do that. Yeah, you hate people or whatever. But you've got room to move here. We have three acres, not including the garden. Which, by the way, is the furthest that I've seen you walk on the property thus far. You think I want to feel this way? And I don't hate people. I have a problem with open spaces. Okay. I don't want to argue. Who needs a ghost with a view like that? Hmm. Wait here. Ned? Ned?
Ned? Yes. Uh, who was that? Who was what? The man that we saw walking outside the house. Oh, him. Just someone who was lost, I guess. I was going to help him, but he disappeared before I got down there. He disappeared? It looked like he was just standing still. I don't know, weird. But when I got down there, he was gone. Do you think maybe he could be our ghost? He's not a ghost, Mary. Hey, now look, I've got a lot of work left to do before bed. Do you mind? Don't be too late. I'll try. Please close the door behind you when you leave. All right? Have a nice nap? I didn't mean to have a nap at all. I was just reading a book and then woke up in here. Why'd you let me sleep? It's late. What were you doing outside in the dark? Oh, I was just getting some fresh air is all. Without your shoes? Oh, I must have forgotten him. Why are you so jumpy? I'm just tired, so. Right. Well, I'm off to bed. Care to join me? What's wrong? Is it that man from earlier? I was so eager to see it, I actually thought it was you. I'm no ghost, Mary. Although if I don't get some sleep soon, I'll be as useless as one in the morning.
Oh, by the way, my sister's coming over today. Great. Is that sarcasm? No, no, I love Trina. It's just, I'm not sure the feeling's mutual. She's just overprotected. You took baths together until you were nine. Oh, hey, Trina. Do let yourself in. Nora's open. Here's the mail. Ah, checking the mail now. How thoughtful. We have dinner with the Royals tonight. Ugh, what time? 7.30, and you cannot be late this time. Got it. <clears throat> Sorry, Trina, party of four. That's all right. Everyone in this neighborhood is super pretentious anyway. Hey, any luck finding that ghost of yours? No. Wait, you're not a ghost, are you? Afraid not. Hmm. Darn. And that's my cue. I gotta go, I'm late. I'll see you tonight, call me. Love you. Love you too. Be nice. Always. 7.30. Got it. So, you give up yet or what? On what? Finding your ghost. I don't know. I thought maybe I saw something last night. Like what? You're gonna think it's stupid. Just tell me. Ned and I saw a man walking outside by the house. Okay. So Ned ran out to question him, but by the time I ran back inside, he was already upstairs working in the office. I mean, you know my brother, he works all the time. Yeah, but it took me maybe all of five minutes to come back and find him there. He couldn't have gotten outside and back in in that short amount of time. Well, maybe he never went. Maybe he was too chicken shit. Why would he lie? I don't know. What I do know is that my brother's never been known for being overly brave. He probably just didn't want to worry you is all. Hey, I'm gonna go into town after I shower. Do you need anything? No.
Mary, I can explain. Royals came over at seven for cocktails. Waited over an hour for you. Turkey was cold, so I tossed it. You know how work can be. You didn't call. I know, I'm sorry. I forgot, I got busy. You know, looked at my watch, it was eight o'clock before I knew. He had your face, Ned. What? The night when I fell asleep on the patio. Mary, you're just angry. I saw him when I went outside. I saw his face and he saw mine. You were probably dreaming. You just said yourself you fell asleep. Your sister told me you were a coward, Ned. This is about your shit again, isn't it, huh? About your ghost? You're upset because you didn't find your ghost because you want to feel special, huh? You don't feel special enough that I'm out working all day long so you can live in a big ass house like this. Who is Henry Elwell? Where did you hear that name? He sent a letter. A letter? Yeah. You two must know one another. Did you read it? I googled him. There's an article in the Sentinel. A man named Elwell has brought a suit against you? There's something wrong with a blue mine stock. Mary, please. Did you ruin that man's life? Where did you hear that? That's what the article said, Ned. This letter is from a lawyer saying they're suing you for a crime. You know about this? I deserve an answer. Of course I knew about it, but it's nothing. Nothing? They sent a letter, they must feel they have grounds. Are you sure you really wanna hear this? Cause it's not particularly interesting. It's a simple financial squabble over interest and the Blue Star of Mine stock. What happened? Elwell was put onto the stock. I told you about him at the time. He was down on his luck and I was just trying to help him out. If you were trying to help him, then why the lawsuit? Read the letter. He probably hooked up with some shyster lawyer who put him up to it. It's all pretty technical and complicated. You wouldn't understand because you're not in the field. So it doesn't worry you at all that we could lose the house, that we could lose everything? We're not gonna lose the house. I didn't mention it in the beginning because it did worry me, but it's all ancient history now. So, he lost the case. The lawsuit has been withdrawn. Withdrawn, what does that mean, withdrawn? Because he doesn't have a leg to stand on, or what? Exactly. How long ago did this happen? LL came around about a year ago. We knew about the lawsuit shortly after he lost his interest in the stock. And we've known about the withdrawal for a while now as well. A while? A couple of weeks. So then there's nothing to worry about. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look at you, you get all worked up. That's why I didn't mention it. I should have called you tonight. I'm sorry. It's just that and then this letter shows up. I was worried. You don't have anything to worry about. Let me make it up to you. I'll make some pancakes.
this is Ned. God, you scared the hell out of me. I woke up and you were gone. I went to look for you. What are you doing out of bed? I... I thought I heard something. Did you find anything? No. It's late. Come on, let's get some sleep. Honey. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh! <laughs> oh, you scared the life right out of me. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Uh, I, I don't remember hiring anybody to take care of the pool. Yeah, it's a, it's a habit. Uh, just routine pool maintenance. Uh, boy, this house sold super quick. I take it you're the new owner. Uh, yeah, I am. Well, like I said, my apologies. I guess I didn't get the memo from the office, so... <laughs> guess this one's on the house. <laughs> my bad. Uh, I'm just gonna finish up cleaning here, and then I'll get out of your hair, all right? All right, no worries. Hey, actually, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, what can you tell me about the people that used to live here? Did you know them at all? Well... I didn't really talk to him that much, but I remember them being, I remember them being really nice. You know, if I had to guess, probably a little bit older than you. No kids that I can remember. No pets. <laughs> I can tell you they didn't get much use out of this pool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did they, uh, did they ever mention their ghost? <laughs> no. What is it? It's just... I don't live around here. I, uh... I live in the real world. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Well... Where I'm from, you know, you... You live each day to your fullest, and... When you die, that's it. No ghosts afterwards. <sighs> hmm. Seems that the rich and the wealthy live by a different set of rules. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that last part. It's okay. So, you don't believe in ghosts? Ghosts and goblins? <laughs> no. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, Mary. Mary. Well, I'm Gil. Uh, on the way out, uh, I'll leave my card up there on the patio table, and if you want some more routine maintenance, you know who to call. All right. Sounds good. Well, it was nice to meet you, Gil. You take care. Have a great day. Say, you don't have any dogs, do you? Uh, no. Why do you ask? Good. That's good. <laughs> Not a... You're a cat person? Uh... I could answer that a couple different ways. <laughs> but dogs like to nip at me, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Looking for these? I 
Can I help you? Morning, ma'am. I'm here to see Mr. Boyne. How do you know Ned? He's expecting me. It's not what I asked you. Look, my husband may be expecting you, but not here he isn't. He left for the office an hour ago, so if you have business with him, I suggest you meet him there. Or call. Wait. I didn't get your name. Just in case my husband calls, I can let him know you were looking for him? Hank. Is there a message? I'm sorry I bothered you. I'll try Mr. Bourne another time. I can give you the address to his office. No need. Thank you much, ma'am. You want a snack? I'm making this sick charcuterie board. Nope. Okay, more for me. What happened? You look like you've seen a ghost. Has Ned called the house today? Not that I'm aware of. Why do you ask? Uh, the strangest thing just happened while I was out in the garden. A man came looking for him. A man? Yeah, he said his name was Hank. Do you know of a Hank? Has he ever mentioned a Hank to you before? No, why would I know of a Hank? I mean, it's not that weird. Ned works with tons of people. Oh, wait. There was this guy, Hank, at um, the Christmas party that I remember. He's always wearing a hat, but he wears it backwards, and he's over 25, so it's kind of weird and makes people uncomfortable, but... I know he works with a lot of guys, but how many of them come to the house looking for him? Oh, shit. For real? Maybe this guy's your ghost? You sure you don't want to bite? Hello? Trina, is that you? Did you call me? <sighs> Jesus, what is it with you and your brother sneaking up on people? It's a gift. Or a curse. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I thought I heard something in here is all. What'd you find? Nothing. Forget it. What time is it? Has that called? It's almost six. I'm headed back. Are you sure everything's okay? I can stay if you need me to. No, don't be silly. I still need to get dressed and start making dinner before Ned gets home. All right. Well, go dry off. 
making streaks on your floor. Voicemail again. It's late and I'm starting to worry. Your office is closed, so no one's getting back to me and you're not picking up your cell. Just call me back. Just let me know you're okay. What time would you say you heard the first noise? Uh, nine o'clock? Maybe 9.30? It was around the time I called Ned cell. And then you followed the noise upstairs? Well, the plates came first, but then yes, a book just flew out of my husband's office. What book? I don't know what book, a book. What difference does it make? Look, I know it sounds crazy, but I saw it with my own eyes. Where's your husband at now? Uh. I don't know where my husband is. He has, he didn't come home last night. What? Is it normal for your husband not to return at night? No, it's never happened before. Absolutely not. If you don't mind, I'd like her to answer the questions. And you didn't call the police? The police are here now, aren't they? He could be hurt or, or worse. 
Have you tried to make contact with your husband since last night? Yes, of course. I called his cell, I called his office, nothing. How many times have you called? A dozen times, maybe more. I called all morning. What time is this office open for business? In an hour. Okay. Give me the address, I'll go by there. Make sure your husband's doing okay. Okay. Why would he just not come home like that? Oh, Jesus, Trina, I don't know. It could be anything, really. Some men stay at the office just to stay away, and some are having affairs and lose track of time. <laughs> That's not cheating on me. Are you sure? I want you to be open-minded so you won't be shocked in case uh, I don't know what your husband's been doing. What do you mean, shocked? Lots of people leave secret lives. I see it all the time. I want you to be prepared for that fact. But in the meantime, just take a shower, put some food in your stomach. No one's been hurt. There's no sign of forced entry or struggle. This could be nothing more than your ghost appearing. Your sister-in-law mentioned that you hadn't seen yours yet. What about you, officer? How ghost, Mr. Green? <laughs> he moved things around, turned the lights on and off. Kids can't get enough of them. Thank you, officer, for your help. I appreciate it. I'll be in touch. Like I said, good medicine. Before I leave, I'm looking around the property, make sure everything's okay, check things out. Thank you. You're mad. A little. You didn't mention my brother was missing. Oh, it hasn't been 48 hours yet. Still, God, this is just the push you needed, what? isn't it? Oh. What's that supposed to mean? Now you can completely hate me. <laughs> I never hated you, Mary. I just never liked you as much as Ned did. And I never held it over you. You did that to yourself. Oh, really? The little remarks, the coming over whenever you feel like it? The checking in on your brother like he's living with someone on parole? I come by because Ned invites me, not because I give a shit about you or your relationship. But maybe I should because you just let him go missing without fucking telling anyone. Please leave. Excuse me? I asked you to please leave. Look, he may be your brother, but this is our house. Congratulations. Looks like you finally found your fucking ghost. to the office, but I'll call you when I know something. Just stay calm. I'm gonna do my best to find your husband. Stay by your phone. I'll be in touch. Thank you.
morning, neighbor. Oh, hi, Patricia. Now's really not a good time. Well, this won't take long. I don't know if you and Ned are free tonight, but we're having a few people over for dinner. I know it's short notice. Ned hasn't come home, actually. Oh? Well, is he all right? Is everything all right? I saw the police call, but I didn't think it was my place to ask questions. Honestly, I don't know. The police said he could be cheating. Ned? Yeah. Listen, Patrice, when was the last time you saw Ned? Oh, it was yesterday morning. It was early because I was out early to let my people out to use the bathroom before we went for a walk, and I saw him pulling out of the driveway. That's all you remember? Well, it was early. Like I said, uh, I mean, he was backing out of the drive. I didn't think nothing about it. Although, I did think it was a little bit strange that he had someone in the car with him in the passenger seat. He did? Who was it? What did he look like? I couldn't say. Patrice, think, please, anything you can remember. He was younger than Ned and, and maybe had a hat on. A hat? Uh, like a ball cap. Are you all right, dear? I have to go, Patrice. Thank you well, for telling me, really. We'll do dinner another if night. We could... I don't understand. Shortly after we moved in here, Ned and I were sitting out on the patio. We were looking out to the valley, and we saw a man. He was standing out by the trees. He was young. He was wearing a ball cap. Ned ran out to find him, but I, I don't think he ever actually left the house. Why not? Because when I came in, I came right back here to the office, and Ned was already here. My husband's fast, but no one's that fast. All right. So then shortly after that, we get this, this letter. It's the first time I hear the name Henry Elwell. I suppose keeping this from you. Yeah, he never told me about the lawsuit. When I asked him about it, he said it wasn't a big deal. Said that it had been withdrawn and that Elwell didn't have a leg to stand on. So what was the lawsuit about? Some stock that never panned out. Apparently Elwell lost a fortune. But so then, right out of the blue, this man comes to the house looking for Ned, which never happened before. It's never happened before. He said he was a had business with him and that he, he needed to speak with him. He's never had a client come to the house before. So what was the name of this visitor? Hank. Hank? As in short for Henry? <sighs> yes. Yes, I think that man was actually Henry Elwell looking for Ned. The morning he went missing, my neighbor said that she saw him leaving for work early and that she had a passenger in the car with him. He was wearing a ball cap. The man in the valley was wearing a ball cap. This cannot just be a giant coincidence. Okay. What else did this Hank say to you? Uh, just that he was looking for Ned and I told him that he wasn't here. He said he'd try him another time. What? What aren't you telling me? I stopped by your husband's office after I left here this morning. They haven't seen him either. No one's seen or heard from him in two days. <sighs> okay. Okay. Well, you can, you can get this Henry out. Well, you can bring him in for questioning, right? He's, he's gotta know something. How exactly would I get a hold of him? I don't know. You're the police. That's your job, isn't it? Uh, Mary, have you thought perhaps your husband wanted out of this marriage? What? No. Absolutely not. Well, typically you wouldn't really know until one morning you wake up and your spouse is gone. Henry Elwell has kidnapped my husband. But we don't have evidence of that. I just told you the evidence! Do your fucking job! Evidence? What evidence? You've got a typed letter detailing a withdrawn lawsuit. It's no signature, so we can't we can't trace the handwriting. You've got a man in the valley with a ball cap, but no other description. You've got a neighbor who may or may not have seen your husband leave with a man in the cap before sunrise. Oh, and then you've got Henry Elwell coming to visit you. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Look, your husband is missing. We don't know why. We may not never know until he returns. You understand? Now, 
as crazy as it may sound, you mentioned that you haven't seen your ghost yet. Now, people around here take, take that shit serious. Now, have you thought that maybe this, this person that come visit you, this, this Hank from the Valley, that he might be in fact your ghost? Maybe that's why you think they're the same person. Okay, listen, um, we're gonna put these up around town. Maybe someone's seeing where your husband's going off to. Not to take matters into your own hand. Let us do the job that we're paid to do. Okay? I'm not staying. He's not coming back, is he? I don't know. Mom is freaking out. Aunt Hildy can't stop conspiring long enough to start freaking out. It's just a fucking mess. I think it was my fault. I know it. <laughs> Ned's a big boy. Don't give up on him just yet. I didn't mean to startle you. Really. I'm not here to hurt you. Henry well. My friends call me Hank. Please. That's not necessary. I read the letter you sent. Then you know that what you hold in your hand is useless. How do I know that? I don't know anything anymore. If you throw it, it'll pass right through me. You're a ghost, aren't you? I'm someone's ghost, but not yours. Then why are you here? What did you do to Ned? I like this room. It reminds me of the place where you wait. Wait for what? To be chosen. We all have to wait. We're all eventually bound to something, whether we like it or not. What did you do to my husband? 
We saw you on the field. I saw your face. I know it was you. I will never know what became of Ned. No one will ever know. Except this house. The house will know. The books will know. Because they were here when that last scene was played. When I showed up in the valley and caused Ned to follow me out, the floor you walk on felt his steps, the, the chair saw his face. You're lying. You saw his face. You were in the car when he drove off. I am a messenger. I did not curate the message. Your husband spent a lifetime making money off the ignorance of others, at the expense of his clients and their misguided trust in him. He spoke with such a conviction that even I was swung by him. I lost everything. I lost... I lost the woman that I love. Mr. Boyne made his money on the speculation. Some would say the brilliant speculation of the Blue Star stock at the cost of someone less alert. The victim of Mr. Boyne's ingenuity was me. I wasn't smart enough. That's all. If I had been, maybe he would have turned around and served him the same way. It's the kind of thing that happens every day in business. I guess that's what they call the survival of the fittest. Cain and Abel, uh, Colt in the stable. You... You took your own life because of what he did? He ruined my life. Yes. And you killed him. He's dead, isn't he? No. You see, I borrowed most of the money that I lost in the Blue Star, so I was up a tree. That's why when they told me that I lost everything, I shot myself. No. I, I don't believe you. I know my husband. He, he wouldn't hurt anyone. Do you? I mean, do you really know Ned Boyne? I was sent here to this house the night you saw me in the field. Ned, he never came down to find me. Instead, he ran in here in an attempt to hide the evidence of what he'd done. You stood in that doorway and he lied to you. He lied to your face because that was his gift. He lied with such special skill. When I came to you in the garden, it was meant as a final warning from the ones who place us. Yet he still continued to lie, continued to use others for his own gain until I took a ride with him that morning. The last time anyone saw your husband was the most honest he had ever been in his entire life. Seeing your end will do that to you. What? Where did you go after he drove off? He was offered another chance, but he refused. He couldn't bear it. The thought of self-exposure, even if it meant the opportunity to save you. Did you know he kept it in the glove compartment? What? The 22 caliber pistol. He told me it was a wedding gift. <gasps> Mrs. Boyne. <gasps> Mrs. Boyne, you are not well. Shall I call somebody? Would you like a glass of water? He's waiting now, just like the rest of us. I'll be going now. Good night, Mary. Wait, wait, when will I see him again? I'm not sure, perhaps never. Depends on where he ends up. The story goes that once you move in, you're visited by a spirit, your ghost. And then once you see it, it remains in the house forever. (laughs) 
Mary. Person. I hurt you more than I ever even knew possible. I don't I don't understand. Why? All I need you to understand is that I'm gonna miss you more than anything in the world. Your face every morning. The way your smile lit up her room. The way you laugh. I didn't deserve you, but I did love you. And I will always love you. Wait, don't go, not yet, please. I'm not your ghost. Mrs. Boyne? Mrs. Boyne? Mary, please. Mary, it's important that you not give up hope. I'll keep looking for your husband unless you tell me otherwise. He's never coming back. Do you know this for a fact? In my line of work, we tend to deal in absolutes. Thank you, officer, but I, I don't think you need to come back here again. Can I ask, do you have any idea where he could be? He's waiting. It's a beautiful property. I know you're going to miss it when you go. I never went past the garden. Really? Why is that? I don't like open spaces. We always have to leave, but we can't stay in a place they want you to go. Those mean he's sorry. What? Tulips. This it? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll take it out and wait in the truck. Okay. Hey, you okay? Yeah. I'm fine. You don't have to be okay if you don't want to. You know that, yeah? Yeah, I know. I think I'm okay. Good. Let's shake the leg. All right. Thank um, you. I'll meet you out there. All righty.
Okay, I think you'll really like this place. Come on in. Oh, wow. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. So the previous owners just moved back east, so this place is a hot commodity, to say the least. We have the original hardwood floors, the updates throughout. I mean, this view. You move in, you're pretty much upper class by the end of the week. And then, of course, there's the folklore that comes along with the estate. The, the ghost, right? That's right. Everyone in the area has one. Well, that's what we heard. Is it true? From what I've heard, it is. I just think that's so cool. Come over here. Let's take a look. them. They must have left that behind. Well, I don't think we need to see anything else. We'll take it. Terrific. Follow me out. We can draw up the papers. <laughs> Chase, but you act like you don't. So don't. 